Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the video lesson for Chapter 5, Section 6 in your McGraw-Hill Geometry textbook covering inequalities in two triangles. Now, this is a relatively short section, so it'll be a relatively short video. Uh, pretty much what it boils down to is we have a new rule here in this section called the Hinge Theorem. Uh, it's a very wordy rule, so I feel like in this case, uh, while it is important to listen to the word part of this, uh, really the part where we write it as an if-then statement will be far more uh, uh, clear, will be far clearer than the words. So the theorem reads, if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle, so in other words, if we have two sets of congruent sides, and the measure of the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the measure of the included angle in the second triangle, then the third side of the first triangle must have greater length than the third side of the second triangle. So down here, these two pictures, uh, I think, is going to explain this a little bit better uh, than the worded version of this. So you have these two triangles, ABC and DEF. Um, notice that in those two triangles, we have two sets of congruent sides. We have AB is congruent to DE. They're each marked with two marks. And BC is congruent to EF. They're each marked with one mark. So that's two sets of congruent sides. Now, because of that, we have an angle in between those congruent sides. Uh, in the triangle ABC, the included angle would be angle B. This is the included angle here between those two side lengths. And in triangle DEF, the included angle would be angle E. It's fairly clear by looking at these triangles that angle B is obtuse and angle E is acute. So we should be able to fair, say with fair certainty that the measure of angle B is greater than the measure of angle E. Okay, so this is what the hinge theorem is saying. If we have this situation where we have two triangles with two sets of congruent sides and the included angle of one of the triangles, angle B, is greater than the included angle in the other triangle, angle E, what that tells us is it tells us that the sides opposite those angles, which would be AC in triangle ABC and DF in triangle DEF, they have the same relationship as the included angle which means that AC, which is the side opposite of angle B, has to be greater than DF. The length of AC has to be greater than the length of DF. Okay, that's the hinge theorem. It's called the, I call it the hinge theorem. I'm not sure if everybody calls it the hinge theorem. I call it the hinge theorem because, again, that's what we're sort of looking at here, is we have these two triangles where we've got these two set lengths, and we're talking about the relationship between the angle in between and the third side. So if we have two set congruent lengths, whichever angle is bigger between those two set lengths, the third side of that triangle will be greater. Okay? So let's look at some examples. Uh, here in this first picture, we need to recognize that we have two sets of congruent sides. One set is marked, and then we have XZ, which is reflexive. So we're asked to compare some side lengths here. We're asked to compare WX which is this length here, to YZ, or I'm sorry, YX, which is this length here. Now notice that those side lengths are opposite the included angles in those two triangles. So our hinge theorem will apply here. Uh, XY is opposite a 55 degree angle. And WX is opposite a 51 degree angle. So when we're asked to compare WX and XY, we can know that they have the same relationship as those two angles. Since 51 degrees is less than 55 degrees, that means that WX has to be less than XY. Okay, so in this next problem, they're actually asking it in the opposite direction. So again, we need to just think to ourselves, okay, what are we really looking at here? The measure of angle FCD, so we'd go FCD, that would be this angle right here. We're being asked to compare that to BFC, BFC, so that would be this angle down here. 
same idea. We have this relationship that forms between those angles and the opposite sides. So we can compare 3.6 to 3. Okay, so the 3.6 units is the length of the side opposite angle BFC, and the 3 units is the length of the side opposite angle FCD. Since 3 is less than 3.6, the measure of FCD is less than the measure of BFC. Okay, at this point you should pause the video and try the next two examples on your own and then resume the video to see how you did. So on the third example, the triangles are not attached to each other. Again, there's a lot of numbers in these pictures. However, we need to realize that most of those numbers are only there to show us side congruence. For instance, KL and QP are both length 12. That means they're congruent. JL and PM are both 15. That's the only reason the 12s and the 15s are in that picture is for to show us congruence. We don't need them for anything else. So we're asked to compare the length of side JK in the first triangle to the side length MQ in the second triangle. Now what we're talking about here is hinge theorem because we've got those two sets of congruent sides. That means we can compare the angles opposite those sides. So 61 degrees would be opposite of MQ, and 72 degrees would be opposite of JK. Since 72 degrees is greater than 61 degrees, that means JK must be greater than MQ. Same thing in the next one here. We've got our two sets of congruent sides. They're already marked. The eights are in there to be distractors. They are unnecessary to the problem. SRT would be this angle right here. And VRT would be this angle right here. Again, what we're being asked to do is compare those angles using the opposite side lengths. So ST would be the opposite side from the green angle. And VT would be the opposite side from the blue angle. So we'd have 11 as the units as the length opposite angle VRT, and we would have 6 units as the side length opposite SRT. Since 6 is less than 11, the measure of angle SRT is less than the measure of VRT. Okay, so that's the first problem type, is actually doing those comparisons. The second one is a little bit harder. And that is when they give us a picture like this and they say, find a range of possible values for x. Now, I am going to say that I am simplifying this a little bit. Um, in theory, there is a lower limit to these values as well. But what this is going to describe is how to find the upper constraint on the value of x. Uh, so just as a quick explanation, in theory, we should also be finding the lower constraint. That is, the x value that would... Uh, create a zero degree angle in this picture, in theory we should be finding that value as well to give the full range from low to high. But we're not going to worry about that here in our high school level geometry course. We're just going to worry about how we find the upper constraint using the hinge theorem. So again, we're going to use hinge theorem to set up the inequality. We have two sets of congruent sides. We have the side marked with one dash and we have the reflexive side. So what we do is hinge theorem. We say, okay, we need to set up an inequality. Well, the hinge theorem says that there is a relationship between 2x plus 7 degrees and 41 degrees based on the relationship between the 5 and the 4. Okay? Since 4 is less than 5, that means that 2x minus 7, which is opposite of 4, is less than 41, which is opposite of 5. Okay, that's our hinge theorem going into play there. And then we would just solve that inequality. And again, what that's telling us is the upper constraint. It's telling us what x has to be less than. So we would add 7 to each side, just like we would for an equation. 
That would give us 2x is less than 48. And then we would divide by 2, which would give us x is 24. I'm sorry, x is less than 24. That means that whatever our x value is, it has to be less than 24. Now notice I'm not marking that with any units because x is not an angle. It's a value being plugged in to find an angle measure. Now as I said before, again, the other thing is, in theory, and we're not even going to worry about that in this class, we would also have to say, based on the fact that 2x plus 7 is an angle measure, 2x minus 7 has also got to be greater than 0. Okay, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, that's something we'll worry about some other time. Okay, so uh, please pause the video and try the second problem. Again, what I really want you to find is that upper constraint. X has to be less than what? So please use the hinge theorem to set up and solve an inequality for the second problem. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then resume the video and see how you did. So the hinge theorem states that we can draw a comparison between the side lengths based on the opposite angle measures. And again, the reason we can do that is the hinge theorem says if we have two sets of congruent sides, then the relationship between the included angles will be the same as the relationship between the third sides. So, since 27 is less than 37, that means that 3x minus 5 is less than 2x plus 3. Again, this is a relatively simple inequality to solve. We subtract 2x from each side and we add 5 to each side. That would cancel the 5, cancel the 2x, and would leave us with x is less than 8. Again, that is only the uh, upper constraint. There's also a lower constraint, but again, we're not worried about that right now. What we're worried about is figuring out the upper constraint based on the hinge theorem. So that does it for this section and for Chapter 5. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Your assignment is found on Google Classroom.